All right, welcome everybody. So in this video, I want to quickly walk through how you could open up a new R markdown file and um, edit that markdown file, just doing the basics. So um, I'm going to assume that you've already installed R in R Studio, or else you won't be able to edit an R markdown file. Um, so I had a previous vid video um, that walked through the steps of installing R in R Studio. So if you haven't done that, please check out our Canvas site or um, the video that I posted about installing um, R in R Studio. So I'm going to assume that both of those are done. And so while I'm here showing the Canvas site, um, here is what's called an R markdown file. So the file extension is .rmd. Um, and so at first, we're just going to open up R Studio and create a brand new document. But if you um, want to open up an existing document afterwards and play around with this, then you can click on this link in Canvas and um, click on download this file. And um, I'm going to just download it, say, to my desktop. And then um, if you want to play around with this later, you can open up that file in R Markdown. So um, first, let me talk about how we can open up R. And so I happen to be on a Mac, so you might see this file system uh, familiar for Mac users. But um, R Studio is going to be saved in your applications folder on your computer. So that's over here. So if I want to open this, I just double click on R Studio like I would any other application. And then down below, I've got in my ribbon on the bottom an R Studio icon for this application. And so since we're going to be using this a lot, for example, on a Mac, you might want to pin this um, to your desktop. So I might want to choose to keep this in my dock so that I don't have to go into the applications folder to open up R Studio each time. So now we've opened up um, R Studio. And so what we're looking at right now in the middle is what's called the console. Let's open up an R Markdown file from scratch. So I'm going to go into the file menu, either up top in the ribbon, all the way up top. Um, and I'm going to choose new file. And then I've got different options for what type of file to open up. And there's an R Markdown option, and there is a Markdown option. I want to create a brand new R Markdown file. So I'm going to choose the R Markdown option. And it's going to ask me for a title. So I'm going to say my first R Markdown file. And it has the date over here. And if I want to keep that date updated, say the next time I work on this document tomorrow, that's what this checkbox is going to do. And um, we're going to be working with a dynamic notebook in R Markdown. There is an option to export that file um, to a static document. Um, and you've got different options for those. And the most universally um, easily shared file would be HTML. So I'm going to recommend that at least at first you uh, choose your default option to be HTML. And we don't need to play with any of the other options. Now we're ready to open up this file. And so by default, this file has not been saved. It's called untitled1. And um, it opens up a little template for us. So um, the first thing that we might want to do is save our work. So I'm going to save this file into some folder. Let's just put it on my desktop again. I'm going to call this my first our markdown file. And if I want to make this a little easier to read, let me put some hyphens in here. And I'm going to save. And so it's going to choose by default to save this as a .rmd file. So every time I open up another file, we'll get different tabs up top. And so now we're looking at an R markdown file. And you can see in some parts, there's text written. And in some parts, there's some weird looking um, computer code looking stuff. Um, and the other thing you might be noticing right now is that there's four different kind of panes open in an R Studio window. So down below here is what's called the console. And so this is where commands are actually run. But we're going to run them up here in the R markdown file. So we're pretty much 
never going to really need to use the console. So you can more or less ignore this pane down here if you like. Um, this pane over here um, on the lower um, right hand corner where you can see files and plots and packages and help. Um, this is a good way to look at some help documentation or if you created some plots, you can see all of the plots down here, but you're not gonna be editing this section of um, our studio. And over here in the top right corner is your environment window. And so here's where you can see what objects you might have created. Um, again, the main window that we're gonna be working with is this middle one. And so if you want to resize things, you can um, to make that middle piece um, even larger. And so there are two modes that we can work with an R Markdown file. We are currently using the source mode. So if you've worked with Markdown stuff before, for example, using Jupyter or Google Colab notebooks, um, the Markdown um, code here should look pretty familiar. And these little code cells over here should also look familiar. In Colab, you're working with little um, cells of Python code. In R Markdown, we're going to be working with cells of um, R code. Uh, so if you like kind of seeing the code in the background, then the source mode is really nice. If you prefer working with a more kind of Word doc type environment, then you can switch over to the visual mode um, by moving between the source and visual buttons over here. So this kind of renders all of the Markdown into a more readable format. So you can see here's markdown, here's our code cell, here's a markdown cell, and so on. Uh, and here in this visual mode, I can edit this file as well by typing stuff over here, blah, blah, and so on. Um, so we'll get into more of the specifics about different formatting that you can do in markdown cells. But for now, I just want to introduce you to the difference between these two cells. So we've got markdown cell over here, and over here, we have um, an R code. And so if you want to run this code, uh, we can hit the play button over here. And this gives us a summary of um, a data set, which is called cars, which is um, built into R. So there's nothing, um, there's no data set that you need to install. This cars data set was installed when you installed R. And again, to play this, we just hit the play button. Another common way to play things on a Mac is to hold the command key and um, hit return, and that will run code. And I believe on a PC, it's the control button and um, return. And just to get a sense of the types of things that we can do in R, here is going to create a plot of a data set called pressure. You can see we get a nice plot um, generated down below. So what's nice about our markdown files is that the code is very intuitive. If you want to create a plot, then the command is plot. Um, so I think the coding side of things is a little bit more intuitive than if you've worked in Python. So that's a really nice advantage. Um, but if you have worked in Python, I will just say that um, R is a little bit more um, focused on statistical analysis and data visualization, whereas Python is a programming language that's great at doing a whole bunch of different things um, beyond just statistical analysis. Okay, so while we have this document open, um, again, we'll dive much deeper into writing uh, markdown files as we progress through this semester. But if I want to add a new R code cell, um, then there are different ways that I can do it. I can go up to the insert menu choose code chunk and choose to insert, for example, an R code chunk. And then it creates one of these windows down here where I could do something like three plus four and hit run and it'll calculate the output of that code. Um, another way to enter an R code cell is to do three, <laughs> these diagonal um, quotes and then put an R in curly brackets. And now when I hit return, it's gonna create an R cell um, where I could type, well, I wouldn't want to type that, um, where I could type um, some sort of command um, in R. So I could do eight squared, for example, and this should tell me that the output here is 64. If you want to enter text, then you just type things. If you want to enter 
um, something at a header level, then you could do one um, pound sign, and then you can type, here's my next section. And then start typing your text down here. So that's how you can interact with things um, in the visual mode. And if you're working in source mode, um, it very much works the same exact way. You would really just type the same exact text. It just is not going to appear formatted nicely. And then in the end, if you want to create a nice static document, for example, to hand in your homework, then um, this tells us down here that um, um, then you would click the knit button to create a static document. And so that knit button is no located right here. Um, and so now when I click knit, this should um, run through a little script. And now it creates a static HTML file, um, which looks pretty clean and nice. Um, so it's a nice way to write up reports where you've got some text and you've got some R code that you want to enter within the text. And so um, the very last thing I want to mention in this video is um, how to open up an existing file. So I saved um, that file that was called installing R uh, onto my desktop. So let me open that file which is located in my desktop, and it was called installing R in rstudio.rmd. And so when I open up this file, um, it opens it up in source mode. Um, let me take a look at what this looks like in visual mode. So here were the instructions about how to install R in rstudio. Um, and so before I leave this video, um, we're going to be using some packages to do some data analysis this semester. Um, and so down below, if you want to install these packages so you're ready to go for this semester, you can go ahead and do that. So um, one really useful package in data analysis is the package called DPLYR. So if I want to install that package, I just hit the play button over here. I've already installed this, um, but I'm installing it again. And you'll see that there was some stuff that was running in the console down below, but that's really not that important to me. Um, over here, if I want to install um, more than one package at once, ggplot2 is a really nice um, data visualization package, and tidyverse is a really nice data analysis package. Um, then I can install both of them at once, um, by running this code over here. And that has installed both of those packages. And so you're only going to need to install these packages just one time. Now I've got this package installed and I can use it for as long as I like. Um, however, each time we open up a new session of R, if you want to use those packages, then you're going to need to load the library of functions inside those packages. So if I open up an R session and I've just installed, say, DPLYR, I still haven't loaded those libraries of functions just yet. So if I want to use any of the scripts inside this package, then I need to load it with a library command. So every time I open up a new session of R, if I want to use this package, then I need to just be sure I include this library command. Um, and now this library has been loaded and I can use all sorts of functions and data sets that are built into this library over here. Um, but as long as you're able to open and edit markdown files for now, um, if you want to hold off on installing these packages, um, we can go through and install them together in class. All right, so now that you've got RStudio um, installed and you're able to open and edit some R markdown files, you're ready to go for the semester.